I'm just checking to see if it's, nothing's buzzing around my entire room. You know, there might be a wasp or something. <laughs> or maybe I might, and I'm hoping I'm not itching, because something might be crawling on me. <laughs> well, anyway, hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and since I just previously reviewed uh, Captain Marvel, yeah, the latest uh, MCU uh, that came out uh, this March of this year, already becoming the highest grossing film so far. The first uh, female-led superhero of Marvel. <laughs> um, I saw it in theaters um, on Friday, and I had a wonderful time. It's actually a great film. A lot better than I expected. So I decided to review the sequel to Ant-Man, a funny movie and very awesome too but simply called Ant-Man and the Wasp yeah. which Scott Lane is back along with um, Hank Pine and his daughter Hope Van Dyne as they join in to save um, Hank's wife into the quantum realm because she was actually stuck there uh, in 1987 and also trying to help out uh, uh, one person who's a villain by the name of Ghost uh, anyway it stars Paul Rudd um, Evangeline Lilly Michael Pena Michael Douglas Michelle Pfeiffer Walton Goggins Randall Park Bobby Cantaval Judy Greer, Tip T.I. Harris, uh, Hannah John Cammon from Ready Player One. She almost looks a little bit like Sophia Botella. Uh, surprisingly, that's not her. And Lawrence Fishburne. Um, it's written by Chris McKenna, along with Eric Summers, Andrew Barrier. Gabriel Ferrari and even Paul Rudd. So yes, he co-wrote the film. And it's directed by Peyton Reed, who did Bring It On and the first movie, Ant Man. The movie begins where we meet Scott Lane, played by Paul Rudd, who's being placed on house arrest uh, two years after the event with the Avengers due to their bombing in the Scovia Accords. Yeah, because unfortunately he couldn't get out of the house, so he has to hang out with uh, his daughter. Um, which, you know, coming from his uh, his ex-wife. And not only that, but his friend does come along just to see how he's doing. So he's just going around, you know, pretending that he was actually an Ant-Man. <laughs> hang out on the weekend just using all these cardboard boxes around and are sliding in <laughs> and all that. Uh, that is until you know he does get in trouble by Lane's parole officer who's also an FBI agent named Jimmy Wu who's played by Randall Park. Yeah. But meanwhile Hank Pine played by Michael Douglas along with his daughter Hope Van Dyne played by Evangeline Lilly had managed to open a tunnel through the quantum realm inside her laboratory, you know, which they always shrink it to make it look like a model. And they, that's why they use those machines. And they always shrink the, the suits and all that, so that way they can go smaller or, or even become a giant <laughs> in that sort of way. Anyway, they believe that Pine's wife, Janet, who's played by Michelle Pfeiffer, might be trapped there after shrinking to a sub-atomic levels in 1987. So she might be still there after all these years, even though she is getting a lot older. Because um, they previously visited the quantum realm um, for over 30 years. Lane basically unknowingly becomes promptly entangled with her and now receives an apprentice message with her that's going straight into his head just when he was having those dreams with only days left of house arrest Lane contacts Pine about Janet despite of the strained relationship that they had due to Lane's actions with the Avengers 
So Hope and Pine had kidnapped Lane, using him as a decoy, yeah, adding an ant, <laughs> just playing the drums and doing all this other stuff, hanging around the house. Yeah, just to not to arouse suspicion from you know, Jimmy. So they believe that the message from Janet was to be confirmed that she is alive inside. So the trio had to work together by building a stable quantum tunnel so they could be able to go straight into it and be able to find her. But unfortunately they had to deal with um, a black market dealer by the name of Sonny Birch who's played by you know, Walton Goggins who has realized that the professional profits that can be earned from Prime's research but double-crossed them completely and that's when we started to see um, a villain by the name of Ghost whose real name is um, Ava Starr it was played by Hannah John Cannon. Yeah, because apparently uh, she was actually involved in an accident that happened which actually killed uh, his father by the name of Elihaz, who was nicknamed Egghead, who happens uh, to work with Pine, one of uh, his former partners, you know, along with Bill Foster, who was played by uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Um, he actually died along with his wife, only leaving her alive, but barely. He's beginning to see some suspicions that's happening to her, like she's having some problems controlling all the movements that she's doing, feeling all this pain and the energy that's happening that's causing her to move around a lot, and, and she can't stop it. So that's why she's, she's moving like a ghost. So they're trying to find a cure to actually help her so she won't be able to suffer from this anymore with the quantum. But but the worst part is part of this procedure would actually kill Janet. So Pine refused to help them and they decided to escape along with Hope and Lane and the lab all the way just so they can try to get to the quantum energy. So they opened a stable version of the tunnel, hoping to contact Janet all the way straight, which Lane somehow did straight from his head. So they try to give him a precise location to find her, but warns her that they only have two hours before they unstable the nature of the realm separates from them from a century. Um, of course, uh, <laughs> Lane's business partners, uh, Lewis, David, and Kurtz, yeah, one is played by Michael Pena, along with David uh, Dasha Machian, and um, Tip T.I. Harris. <laughs> okay, so what happened was, Sonny Birch, along with his gang, decided to give him some um, serum, which apparently, yes, this is where <laughs> Lewis found out that it was true serum. But then they all said, there's no such thing as true serum. But that's why they're threatening him to, to tell them where they are. And this is exactly where we get to the scene where he basically talks about the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help him God. <laughs> uh, yeah, cause, which is funny because this actually happened in the first movie too. He always likes to talk about um, what happened in those events. So he's doing the same thing in this movie too, which is even more hilarious. <laughs> so it goes directly to um, where they are. So it looks to me like, so then we, they begin to find out that yes, they were at the woods where they set up the lab over there. And that's when all the cops came by once they left. It, yeah, as well as the FBI which allows Ava to take the lab and that's what led to a chase scene all the way down to San Francisco which yeah that, that's our, which that's when Prime decided to go into the quantum realm just trying to find Janet which had to take a lot of time meanwhile you know both um, Lane and Dine had to go around trying to get the lab from all the guys around it was like a huge chase 
which also led to, uh, to going all the way into the, um, the boat ride, and that's where, yeah, this is where, you know, he becomes a giant. Because <laughs> um, he, he was having problems with the suit, too, because it was, it was in progress, so it has to be worked fully before it gets complete. So that's why he was having trouble, you know, with the button, so it can change from being small to 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 big or whatever. So it fucks him up completely. <laughs> yeah, he got tired too after becoming a giant, trying to get the the lab from um, Sony because he took it and everyone else was going out for. By the time they they finally found the well, by the time he found it, uh, the lab. I mean, they finally went back, and and this is where uh, Pime suddenly found uh, Janet after suffering those nightmares that he had in between, and that's when she came. So both uh, Pime and Janet came back, only to know that that led to a fight scene between uh, Lane uh, dying and Ava as Ghost and they were like she joins him with uh, uh, with Bill because they're about to escape too but once Janet came she actually helped her you know get rid of all the pain that she was suffering from all that quantum energy that she has and now she finally went back to normal so Everything was going all right, and so in the end, well, Lane returns home once again. Now he's finally released from house arrest by Jimmy, so now he gets to do something again, hang out with um, his family and his daughter, and there you go. <laughs> Till the next project starts. It was an awesome sequel. I mean, it's actually a sequel that's better than the original because there's a lot of funny moments in here and there and and um, it's great that we get to see what happens uh, next and we get to see another villain that's more uh, powerful than ever before but you know, she does change her ways later on because of the pain she was suffering. Um, because she had to wear that suit also, and she does sleep inside uh, you know, the glass uh, room, so that way she'd be able to restore her energy and everything. Um, but great cast, no doubt about it. It was also great to see Michelle Pfeiffer in this movie, uh, you know, playing the Hank's wife, and and she was very good. I mean, considering it's a small role, I mean, at the beginning we begin to see what she looked like when she was younger, yeah, because they de-aged her. When she actually left, uh, when when Hope was uh, a little girl. And they used to, like, play around, and and at, at the beginning, yeah, she was acting like, you know, it's going to be boring, uh, <laughs> pretending like she's going to fall asleep and everything, so that was cool. Um, again, I always uh, love the moments uh, with Scott's best friend and business partner, uh, Lewis, along with his other two. And as I already mentioned too, but I'm going to say it anyway, um, the true serum scene was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I mean, coming from Lewis, because, you know, he's always a comic relief, no doubt about it. Um, he always likes saying that, oh, is that true serum? And the guy just says, no, there's no such thing as true serum. But then they had to, they were... Sony had to threaten him to put some serum on him. So once he was given the serum, this is where he starts to <laughs> to speak the truth. And that's where we get to that story, where it goes really fast. <laughs> and he says, oh yeah, that is true serum. And the guy just says, no, it's not. <laughs> but of course, in the end, I mean, during the, the chase scene, and, and they finally got the lab and everything, uh, they finally caught up with uh, those guys and and they actually did put some serum on them too and they said he's right it is true serum 
That's just hilarious. He only gets a small desk because, you know, he, he didn't have, uh, he's not around all the time, which sucks, I know, because of house arrest and, and they're already having uh, money problems as it is, too, because they're having some issues. You know, they're trying to um, find a way to save money so that way they can be able to fix everything. Because, of course, they have, like, all these <laughs> all these organic foods that they have to eat so they can save money. But they hated it, so, yeah. Uh, but a lot of funny moments all the way. Um, yes, uh, you got Randall Park playing the FBI agent and... Lane's parole officer. Yeah, he was alright, but I guess he suddenly becomes sort of a, uh, like he was just used as sort of a, uh, as a gag these days. I mean, like, whenever he's there, like, whenever something bad happens, uh, when he leaves the house or not, you know, he comes right over, always evading him. Or the fact that even when they come over, they're trying to they're trying to find a way not to not to get him in trouble. And that's why they replace him with an ant where he's going around playing drums. Yeah, I just mentioned it already and and hanging around on the couch and doing all this other stuff. Meanwhile they're about to escape and they, they shrink themselves, you know <laughs> with the machine they have. Um yeah, so they could shrink all these cars that they saved, you know, like those it looks like Hot Wheels and just so they can do whatever they want to escape from everyone and pretend that they're not there. <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, even with that chase scene that, that went all the way down. Cool action scenes all the way around as well as uh, some tremendous CGI effects that they got. Of course, because all MCU films have CGI, there's never wrong with that has a mix of practical effects sometimes. Um, but also, um, considering that Scott Lane's involvement with the Avengers that caught him arrested uh, in the Captain America Civil War, yeah, that's what happened. <sighs> I love that movie too. Uh, I remember that scene in Civil War where <laughs> when he got arrested he was talking to Tony Stark and saying, well like I said, uh, can't trust a Stark. And Stark just says, Who are you again? And he just says, Come on, man. Yeah, when he was injured, by the way. Yeah. During that battle. Uh, but, <laughs> that's the thing about MCU films, is that they always have a good connection. So they, they know they're going to go for a battle. Or, or they're just going to work together as a team. Uh, there's another funny bit in the movie was when he found out that he hidden the suit inside you're gonna love this the trophy that his daughter was about to send for show and tell at elementary school so they had to go all the way just to find it problem is he's having trouble with the suit that he's wearing that's in progress so that's why he's going <laughs> change it into a <laughs> Sort of like a little kid. <laughs> so, uh, th that's why he's having trouble trying to become t this tiny. So he's stuck like that. <laughs> and and the wasp was just laughing at him. <laughs> yeah, Hope is laughing. So now they, they have to go inside the trophy. Yeah, Rosp has to do this on her own to get the suit out. So that way they can get it on progress <laughs> as fast as they can. Even though he... Uh, Lane just got caught by the by a principal saying, you know, you need a halt pass to get through. Yeah, but he escaped. Great cinematography coming from Dante Spinotti. He, he's been working for years. Uh, great music score from Christoph Beck. Yeah, he's been known for doing a lot of great scores anyway. And it's hilarious and fun. And I love it. So anyway, that's uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and I give it five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.